Okay, so I've been playing Geometry Dash for 5 years now and if there is one thing I've noticed in the meantime, it is that beginner creators tend to go for a lot more unusual creation decisions when compared to more experienced creators. So in this video, I'm gonna be making a block design that a beginner would most likely make and as well as one by myself. So hopefully, it's gonna be simpler for you to see what mistakes you could be avoiding to commit when creating. The first thing we usually do within the process of making a block design is the structuring. A beginner naturally doesn't have that critical sense when it comes to geometry dash creation. Therefore, they don't have any concept from what is an actual good structure in their minds. For them, structuring doesn't matter, leading them to possibly make things that look like this. If you're a beginner, you have to put in your mind the fact that the structuring is one of the most important parts of your block. In fact, I would say that the structuring impacts up to 50% of how your block is going to look like when it's finished. Making a good structure is extremely important and unfortunately it can be reasonably harder for beginners. In order to make a good looking structure, you really have to try your best not to overdo it. Sometimes beginners will see some really cool structure in a level they really like but when they try to replicate it, it looks like this. See, sometimes it's even preferable to keep your structure as a simple square instead of trying too hard to make it look more complex. Remember, simple structures aren't bad, but extremely exaggerated ones, for sure they are. You can even use spikes to improve your structures. I see a lot of people saying that spikes don't matter in a design and that it makes no difference to add them or not, but I say these people are totally wrong. Spikes actually add a lot to your block. They add form and shape to it. When used correctly, they will really make a big difference in the quality of your block. Well, this is a pretty basic structure I made. As you can see, it's not overdone. I didn't exaggerate or try to add a lot of random senseless stuff. Even with that, it doesn't look that simple and it works really well for me. Okay, now we're gonna talk about colors. See, a beginner does really know even the basics of colors, color theory or even the meanings of terms like hue or saturation. For them, colors don't matter that much, so they are most likely going to keep their block very monochromatic with no variations at all. Meanwhile, a more experienced creator does know about it. They know about hue. They know about brightness and value, and they know about saturation. Consequently, they are gonna use their knowledge in their favor. They are gonna make a lot of color variation to make their blocks more interesting to look at, and they are also gonna experiment a lot with it. Colors is a complicated topic. It involves a lot of experimenting and trying different things in order to make a good color combination. And I will say that making colors to fit into each other can be a very hard thing to do when starting to create. And sometimes even experienced creators struggle with it, so don't worry about it that much. Now let's talk about the glow. Well, I don't know about you, but when I discovered this option called blending and all the potential it had, I went crazy. Literally, I thought it looked incredible whenever I spammed glow on my levels. I felt like when I used glow, my levels got an RTX effect of sorts and that was just amazing. However, I eventually stopped spamming it, mostly because I suddenly realized that the glow on my levels didn't look like the RTX effect at all. In fact, the closest thing it was similar to was those old 2012 YouTube intros. A beginner usually thinks that more glow equals more good. I mean, blending glow gives us this first impression, after all. When you use it, it creates this really cool bright effects that is very pleasing to look at. But you gotta understand that this bright effect right here is not for spamming. Please, don't just go and spam glow everywhere in your level or in your design, because even if it looks good at your eyes, it doesn't look good for the people who are now just blind by looking at your deck. A beginner would probably do this and spam a lot of glow around their block, and they would probably look at this and think this looks 
the best thing of the universe. However, an experienced creator knows what they're doing. They know how to correctly use Glow. They know that they can't just spam it everywhere on the block. The Glow use has to make sense. You see that in this block, I'm not exaggerating the Glow. I'm making it small, but still managing to make it look attractive and somewhat pleasing to the eye. And also, I'm using the Glow to highlight the bright points of the block. Another thing that I see a lot of beginners doing wrong is this black outline inside the block. Beginners usually do this, they make this outline to be under the glow, making it to be literally invisible. The better way to make these lines is to make them on to the glow. It has to be in front of it, not behind it. Otherwise, it's better just not to do it at all. If you put it behind the glow, believe me, you're just wasting objects and making the level more laggy for literally no reason. The next mistake I see beginners doing is to not care about the minimal details. For instance, I asked some beginner creators about their thoughts on Spike Deco and most of them said it didn't matter and I was like, how come it doesn't matter? What are you talking about? Like, Spike Deco is one of the most important things on a decoration. Even if your deco is simple, you have to put some effort and decorate your spikes somehow. Something beginners always do is, they just speedrun their spikes because they think it doesn't matter, and then the spikes end up making the block look even worse than it already is. You know, if you want your block to look good, you're inevitably gonna have to put effort in every single aspect of it, even the most minimal details details, including the spikes and the glow. This spike deco I'm making is relatively simple to do. In fact, it only took me about one minute to get it done. I just used some fading lines with high brightness and low saturation value, alongside with some spike overlap and a lot of color variation. Putting more effort on spikes is actually a quite simple task and I'm sure it's gonna do some improvements to your deco. Okay, now let's go to the part in which I struggle the most, making the details. Oh my god, this is absolutely the worst, but still the most important part of a block design creating process. A beginner though, doesn't really think too much about that. For them, they can just throw anything into their blocks and it's gonna look good anyways. So what I see most beginners doing is using connectors inside their block. After all, for a beginner, no other details exist, am I right? So if I were a beginner and I came across this block, I would just do this and the details of the block would be finished. Beautiful. Unfortunately, I don't have all of this benefit the benefit of thinking that anything looks good. I've lost that thing a long while ago. Now, things gotta be way better in order to please me. Therefore, I have to make actual good details on my blocks. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is, you're not gonna be able to make good details on your blocks at first. Making good details, seeing what fits or not, and avoiding repetitiveness are skills that you develop over time. You can't just open your game and make something that looks like this in your first, second, are even your 10th attempt. Making good stuff takes time, so please try to enjoy your building process. Try to actually like everything you do, even if it doesn't look good. Don't be sad for making a bad block, be happy for at least doing one, you know? Otherwise, you're just gonna end up having no motivation at all. Having high standards while not being able to create anything that pleases you is a horrible thing, in which I unfortunately had to go through and I don't want anyone to suffer with that just as I did. However, I'm gonna try to give you some good advice about making details for your block. In general, try to make something that fits to your structure the most. Try your best to make the most coherent stuff that you can. But also try not to have the need of filling each grid of the block with some detail that can and will make the block feel unnatural and weird. Try to make the bigger details on your block less bright while doing the smaller details brighter. But also don't follow this rule structurally, you know. Just use it as a minor base for your design. And for the last, try to have fun. You know, it is just a game after all, and if you're feeling burnt out with it, go out, take some water, 
take some time to rest and then you can go back to work and do some cool stuff. Now the details of the block are pretty much done and the last thing we gotta make is the 3D. Okay so I gotta say that I've seen many atrocities in my life when it comes to making 3D. This is how a beginner would do the 3D on their block. As you can see here not only the 3D is wrong it also looks effortless. Now if you're a beginner who's having problems related to making 3D right I'm gonna just put this image right here on the screen. Whenever you have questions about the 3d just look at this image so you can see what's the right way to make the 3d on your block well for my 3ds i personally like to put some extra effort on them and since we're already here let's try to make this 3d in another perspective other than that one that's used the most i personally like to make a lot of outline i like to make some black ones and as well as some colorful ones and just to finish it I'm gonna put some glow here, since I think this part of the block's needing some extra details. Okay, so personally, I know that I could make a much better block if I really tried, but I'm still quite happy with this design. I hope this video anyhow helped you and that you could learn something from it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.